untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another historic gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at Naya Slivers as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, a red, white and green creature tribal deck featuring the Slivers tribe, which all have abilities that make other Slivers we control even better. Take a look at Cloud Shredder Sliver, the 2 mana 1-1 one -one Sliver, saying a Sliver creatures we control have Flying and Haste, that also includes the Cloud Shredder Sliver itself. So the more Slivers we play, the better they get. So let's take a look at our entire deck list here, starting out with our 1-drops, where we only have a Striking Sliver as a 1-1 one -one giving our creatures first strike. At 2 mana we've got Sentinel Sliver, 2-2 two -two giving Vigilance to all Slivers we control. Mana Weft Sliver might be the most important 2-drop in the deck, letting our Slivers tap for 1 mana of any color. Then we've got Predatory Sliver, a 1-1 one -one giving Slivers plus one plus one, so it's essentially a 2-2 two -two that bumps up our team. And then Cloud Shredder Sliver, another very powerful 2-drop, giving Flying and Haste. Then at 3 mana we've got two copies of Spiteful Sliver, a 2-2, saying whenever our creatures are dealt damage, they deal that much damage to target player or planeswalker, can be very powerful in creature matchups. Then we've got two copies of Realmwalker, not actually a Sliver, but it does have Changeling, so it does have all creature types including Slivers, so it will pick up all those bonuses. As it enters the battlefield we choose a creature type, which will be Sliver, and then we can look at the top card of our library at any time, and cast creature spells of the chosen type from the top of our library, so it can provide a nice bit of card advantage. And then we also have two copies of Faceless Agent, which is another changeling. As it enters the battlefield, we seek a creature card of the most prevalent creature type in our library, which is going to be a sliver, so we get to put that into our hand. And then we also have the full playset of Herald's Horn, a three-mana artifact. As it enters the battlefield, we choose a creature type, which will be sliver. And creature spells we cast of the chosen type cost one generic mana less to cast, so we get a very relevant mana discount. And then we also get some extra card advantage, because at the beginning of our upkeep, we can look at the top card of our library. If it's a creature card of the chosen type, we may reveal it and put it into our hand. So Herald's Horn can lead to some very explosive starts and also allows us to outgrind some of the more controlling matchups. And then topping off our curve, we decided not to play Collected Company, which I also tried out in this deck, and it can be a pretty decent card, since we can hit all of the aforementioned slivers, but we do miss out on some powerful 4-drops, which I think are worth it, like the 4 copies of Cleaving Sliver, a 2-2, giving sliver creatures we control plus 2 plus 0, so it's a 4-2 by itself that significantly increases our damage output, and alongside Cleaving Sliver, it's very nice to have a Bone Scythe Sliver as well, a 2-2, giving a sliver creatures creatures we control double strike. I do think we want more cleaving slivers than bone scythe slivers, since the cleaving sliver stacks a little bit better if you draw multiples, but it's still nice to have a mix of both. And then our mana base includes some nice five color lands that are perfect for a sliver deck, like the four copies of Unclaimed Territory, Naming Sliver, and then of course Sliver Hive, which also gives us a nice activated ability in the late game to generate more 1-1 sliver tokens that will pick up all those extra abilities. And then we've got some dual lands with two copies of Temple Garden, Sacred Foundry, and Stomping Ground as shock lands. Then we've got two fast lands with Inspiring Vantage, and then some of the pathways with the Branch Loft Pathway, Needle Verge Pathway, and finally Crack Crown Pathway. And then one of each basic, just in case the opponent has some way to mess with our lands and we need to fetch up a basic land. And then we also get to play with Gigantha, the Wellspring, as our companion as an extra late game play. So that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play with an acceptable hand. Turn to probably Cloud Shredder Sliver. Hope to pick up a third land for Herald's Horn so we can play all these two drops for just one mana. Which will significantly increase our damage output. Facing a Lurus deck, looks like an artifact synergy deck with turn one Ginger Brute. If we don't draw lands, probably go with Predatory Sliver. The Alsade of Life's Bounty into Stone Cold Serpent. Does have protection from multicolored, so it can block the Cloud Shredder even if it gets bigger. Alright, did pick up the land. I think that means we just play Herald's Horn and 
play defense for now. And then next turn we can hopefully triple two drop. Of course, Spirit Dancer, so I guess it's more of an aura deck than uh, an artifact synergy deck. Or maybe a mix of both. Take three. That does open up the Cloud Shredder to potentially attack. Alright, land is great. So, how about. I could triple two drop, play tap land. I could realm walker, see what's on top, and then still predatory times two or sentinel. Right, just a land. So, do we prefer double predatory or do we want some vigilance? I'm kind of liking the vigilance here. Vigilance also very powerful if you've got a mana weft sliver, so you can still tap your creatures for mana in the second main phase. And then Faceless Agent could also be nice with Realm Walker, since we can essentially shuffle the top of our deck to try and find more creatures. Alright, it's gonna be a bigger Stone Coil this time. Can play Striking Sliver. And then Faceless Agent to hopefully reveal another creature on top. Picked up Predatory, no creature on top, but we can play double Predatory and I'm pretty sure that's game here. Alright, and our opponent agrees and packs it in. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with what looks like a fine hand if we can pick up a third land for Herald's Horn and some of our more expensive creatures, but we get to start out with Striking Sliver into Predatory Sliver, which is not a bad start. And then with our creatures being cheaper with Herald's Horn in play, we uh, can more easily deploy the rest of our hand. Facing Interplanar Beacon, so maybe some sort of Planeswalker heavy deck or maybe a cordless ramp deck as we see Radiant Fountain to confirm that. So our mission in this matchup is to basically kill the opponent as quickly as possible before they can deploy powerful threats like Ugin, the Spirit Dragon. And I think Herald's Horn is still gonna help us with that the most. Four mana. For Mindstone into nothing else. Found a nice sliver here. Alright, so we've got four mana. Cleaving Sliver is the more tempting creature to play, although it doesn't let us double spell. So there's something to be said for maybe going Faceless Agents and Realm Walker instead. And then do we start with Realm Walker or do we start with Faceless Agent? If Agent hits something like a Cloud Shredder Sliver, that would be nice. Could also find one with Realm Walker, although that's less likely. Agent is nice to keep until after Realm Walker to shuffle, but I don't think that's going to be relevant in this case. So I think I do go for Faceless Agent in the hopes of finding our Haste's enabling Sliver. Which we did not, but that's okay. And then... I don't think Spiteful Sliver is particularly relevant in this matchup. So we'll go with the Realm Walker instead. And yeah, there's a Cloud Shredder on top for next turn, potentially. So I wouldn't mind drawing a land after picking this up with the Herald's Horn. Although just playing the Cleaving Sliver might be enough. Platinum Angel, pretty difficult for us to beat once it comes down, but I think we'll be able to kill the opponent before it comes down. Alright, there's our land, so we can play Cloud Shredder plus Cleaving Sliver or Bone Scythe Sliver. Pick your poison. This will be plenty enough. Alright, sweet. On to the next one.
All right, we're on the draw, facing off against Umori the Collector as companion, so probably all creatures or all enchantments. This sounds decent. We've got Mana Weft and Cloud Shredder, some of our better two drops, and we even have one drop to start things out. And then turn two, probably leaning Mana Weft over Cloud Shredder. All right, opponent is a mutate deck. Yeah, let's go with uh, Mana Weft Sliver here. And then next turn, we can deploy some more stuff. Could go Cloud Shredder plus Bone Scythe. All right, opponent might go after our lands, so I'm happy that we have a mana creature in play. Otherwise, the Santa's Demolisher would be pretty difficult to beat. So we want a Cloud Shredder. And then I guess Sentinel Sliver's fine. And attack for three in the air. And then next one we can play Bone Scythe pretty easily. Another Symbiote. This opponent can mutate quite cheaply now. As we see a one mana Great Horn. Goes after our mountain. And another Great Horn gets rid of our last land. But uh, yeah, this Mana Weft Sliver has saved the day. This game would have looked quite a bit different had we gone for turn to Cloud Shredder over Mana Weft. So let's play our Bone Scythe. And then we get to hit probably with everyone. They get to eat one of the 3 3 beasts. And then, thanks to Vigilance, we still get to put Gigantha in hands. Opponents at 1. They'll need something like the uh, Auspicious Sterix into some pretty lucky reveals to survive from here. Alright, there's a Sterix. Although at one life I don't really see them surviving unless they can just kill us on the spot with something like Crater Hoof Behemoth. That's not a crater hoof. And your opponent's pretty dead on the way back. But yeah, they did do a good job of keeping us off lanes. Luckily, still had a mana weft to tap for mana. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. I see two lands, a mana weft sliver and a cloud shredder, so I'm keeping. Let's see what we're up against. Swamp. Probably going to lead with turn two mana wefts. Could also go with Cloud Shredder if we know for a fact that our opponent's going to kill our two drop. Gifted Aetherborn points towards maybe like a vampire tribal deck or just mono black with a bit of green for fight spells and Fraction Obliterator. I think we need our extra mana here. So we'll go with the mana wefts. Uh, I see, so it's a Death Touch tribal deck instead. Well, we get to untap with Mana Weft, picked up a land, so that's great. So I could go Cloud Shredder into Herald's Horn, or I could go Cloud Shredder, Predatory Sentinel Sliver. Or I could go Herald's Horn into another 2-drop. So we do have a lot of options. 
I'm kind of liking the uh, Cloud Shredder into Predatory, into Sentinel Sliver. And now we have a 3-3 that can potentially block Finn or Aetherborn. Opponent attacks. Didn't think I can afford to block any instant speed removal on the Predatory would be quite a blowout. So we'll take some more poison damage. Opponent passes, picked up a land. So have a lot of options. I could play Cleaving Sliver, attack with a team and still play something second main thanks to Vigilance. Do we want to play Harold's Horn first for some reason? I don't think so. Let's attack. Probably going to see a removal spell. Right. Trophy my Sentinel Sliver. So we lose Vigilance. Get to pick up our second basic, showing the importance of having a few basic lines. So opponent's at 21, so we wouldn't quite have lethal here if we attack with all. So I don't think I'm going to. Sadly the floating mana goes away. And then... Could play Bone Scythe, have two creatures back to block so we're not that to a single removal spell. That seems reasonable. And then I guess I'll tap the Cleaving Sliver. And then which one do we keep back? Mana Weft, perhaps? Something like this. If they have removal, they probably kill Bone Scythe. But then we can still trade Mana Weft. Well, now we just get to block both. Is there a Sweeper incoming, maybe? Nope. I guess our opponent gives up and didn't have any answers. Sweet, on to the next one. All right, we're on the draw with a keepable hand. We've got our mana wefts, Cloud Shredder and Predatory. Up against Goblins to run Prospector. So against Goblins, we want to be fast. And uh, flying from Cloud Shredder also helps us take to the skies to avoid the ground stall that could happen if a Cranko starts making tokens. For now, turn one striking, turn two mana wefts. The goblin decks typically don't play a lot of removal unless they're the red black version now with the munitions expert. And then we might as well hit for one. And next turn, we're looking at Cloud Shatter Sliver. So let's go Cloud Shredder into Predatory. And then the question is whether I want to shock myself. I don't think so. Although it does essentially deal them two damage as well. So let's do some math. If I hit them for... If I play Predatory tapping Mana Wefts, I would hit them for 4 to 15. Next turn I can play Cleaving Sliver if I have to tap my Striking Sliver for that. Yeah, the two damage might actually end up being relevant here. So I guess we'll shock ourselves. And at this point it might even be worth it to play an extra Cloud Shredder. 
and then next turn the cleaving will be even more impactful. I don't think I need the third clan trailer though. All right. Could see Muxus here. It's gonna be another war chief into Krenko instead. So that makes four goblins. What else do they have? They can still use a prospector for mana. Another Krenko. Okay. Well, that's a lethal amount of goblins. So yeah, the two damage we took ended up mattering. Could have maybe survived this turn with two more life onto the next one. All right, we're on the play with a nice opening hand. We've got our one drop, we've got some good twos, and then cleaving sliver to hopefully top off our curve. Let's see what we're up against here. Hopefully it's nothing too controlling, because a few well-timed removal spells can slow us down. Opponent taking a lot of mulligans indicates a Tibalt's trickery deck. Our hand is pretty fast and we're on the play, so we might even have a chance of beating the Trickery deck, especially if they mulligan to two. So the new versions of Trickery playing the Throws of Chaos to uh, cascade into Trickery. For now, Predatory. And then I guess we'll play the Inspiring Vantage. And then next turn we get to play Cleaving Sliver. Which should give us lethal before any Tibble Strickery shenanigans. Alright, so yeah, being on the play of course, relevant in this type of matchup where speed is of utmost importance. On to the next one. All right, we're on the draw with a fine hand featuring double mana left Cloud Shredder. And hopefully we can pick up some more expensive slivers later. Turn one, a snow covered island. Could be a counter spell heavy deck. Never mind. Looks like a mill deck with the iceberg Cancrix. Well, let's play our mana weft and then. Next turn we can double two drop. Bone Scythe, a nice pickup, especially with Predatory to pump up our power. Tutelage is fine, should be able to outrace it. And Mono Blue not gonna have any real sweepers. So let's go Cloud Shredder into Predatory, into another Mana Wefts. And hit for two. And then next turn Bone Scythe. Let's us attack for lethal in the air if it resolves. We are down to 42 cards, so still a long way to go. Another tutelage, so our opponent is down to one mana. So maybe an unsummon could still interact here. Cleaving Sliver, about as good as Bone Scythe here. Alright, and there we go. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with an acceptable hand. Turn to Mana Wefts usually leads to good things, facing Zelfron Void. And there's even a Cloud Shredder. So, turn two, I think I still lean towards Mana Weft Sliver. As we see, turn two, Mind Stone. So, next turn, we can deploy two two drops. 
as the colorless ramp opponent gets up to 5 mana, 6 potentially next turn. I could go Sentinel Sliver Attack for 1, play another 2 drop. Alternatively, I could play Cloud Shredder, Predatory and Attack. I think that's probably better. Could also tap my two creatures for an extra predatory. I guess that's also fine here. Thanks to the haste from Cloud Shredder, our creatures get to tap for mana right away. We smash for three. And go loss to find the Cascading Cataracts to activate Golos next turn potentially, but there might not be a next turn as we get to add some more slivers to the board. And then which do we prefer? Probably Faceless Agent for now. Another Cloud Shredder. I guess we can tap this for Sentinel and attack, and then we could still technically play some creature second main, thanks to the Vigilance. Although we've got Exaxes. Alright, sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, and yeah, this hand seems fine. Turn 2 mana left. Always an exciting start. And then we've got a couple options on turn 3. We'll get this advantage out of the way. Turn 1 and turn 2 mountains from our opponents. Could be another Tibbal's Trickery deck. And this time we're on the draw, so we might face the consequences. Alright, so 4 mana available. I can go... 3 plus 1, or play a Bone Scythe, although I prefer playing Bone Scythe once we have a more established board state. So I think that means going Faceless Agent, Striking Sliver this turn. And we'll see if we face the Tibble's Trickery here. Yep, there's the Throws of Kills. And Cascades in 2. Table's Trickery, counters the Throws of Chaos, and our opponent finds the Tarrasque. Yeah, it's a good one. Attacks for 10, kills one of our creatures, and uh, probably not going to recover from this. But at least we got to see the Tibble's Trickery deck in action. Spiteful Sliver actually pretty decent in these circumstances. So that can maybe help out. Opponent can replay the Throws of Chaos and hit something else. If it's just a Tarrasque attacking us, we can technically absorb 10 damage and then chump it. But an Ulamog, the Ceaseless Hunger, is gonna seal the deal here, exiling our two blockers and hitting us for 10. So yeah, being on the play, pretty important in this matchup if you don't have access to counter spells or discard effects, otherwise those are fine ways to interact. Alright, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a fine hand. Turn two mana weft into maybe a Herald's Horn, means we'll quickly be able to deploy our hand. And then both Horn and Realmwalker for card advantage. Agent also good combo with the Realmwalker as we'll 
be able to shuffle the top of our deck. And it looks like we're up against a reanimator deck with Priest of Fell Rites. And Seros Emissary in particular is very hard to beat for our deck. Since we don't have a way to remove it, so if it ever sticks, it's uh, game over for us. Next turn we can play Realmwalker, and if there's no Sliver on top we can maybe play the Agent to change that. Alright, just a Rotting Registrar in the graveyard for now, that's fine. Let's play a Realmwalker, could also play another Horn first. Don't actually hate that. Can play one mana Realmwalker and Agent. So let's start with Realmwalker. Another line on top. Don't need that one, so we'll play Agent. And a Cloud Shredder we cannot currently play. And uh, yeah, I'll attack. I'm okay trading my Sliver for the Priest. Another Looting. Can they find something scary to reanimate? And the answer is sort of. Snapdax and Ventosaur can still handle those. Itali as well. So not the scariest creatures, but you can imagine if one of those is a Saros Emissary, we would be in trouble. Sadly, both Herald's Horn Revealing land, mana left on top, and a Cloud Shredder, so can take to the skies and uh, yeah, this is one point shy of lethal, so opponent's got one more chance to find an Emissary. Third looting, discarding Verdant Sun's avatar, so it looks like they've got a bit of a dinosaur reanimation theme going on. And this Bone Scythe on top of our deck should seal the deal. Alright, on to the next one. All right, we're on the play with a uh, fine hand. We've got all three of our more exciting cards to start out, and even a one drop to let us curve out even better. So yeah, hands don't get much better than this. We'll see how it plays out. Could still be in trouble against a more controlling matchup, although Harold Sworn does help. Temple Garden, we don't mind seeing. There is an argument for playing the red side here in case the mana whiff dies. We can still play Cloud Shredder, which is not possible with the green land. Although we have other options as well. Innkeeper. Could be some sort of Bolas Citadel deck. For now, I'm liking Cloud Shredder. And then if I play Sentinel, I can still attack first, although I could also go Herald's Horn into Sentinel. And hit for two. And next run Cleaving Sliver promises a lot of damage. And Wistrider. Also pointing towards kind of this sacrifice Bolas of Citadel deck. I'll take my Faceless Agent. And yeah, cleaving into another Predatory should seal the deal. Alright, on to the next one. All right, we're on the play with a very nice hand, striking into Mana Weft, into Herald's Horn, and hopefully pick up some more expensive slivers from there. 
Well, let's see what we're up against. Turn one Squirrel Sanctuary, so maybe Squirrel Tribal. Always a fun matchup. So next turn, Herald's Horn into Mana Weft, potentially. Take two, as Squirrel Sovereign pumps up the team. I guess we can empty our hands and then still have two power first strike on defense. Can start activating Sliverhive as well if we're out of stuff to do. Although Chatterfang is quite scary. Another mana left on top. And a Faceless Agent. So let's start with Agent and see what it reveals. Predatory is not bad. So I can play Predatory and Mana Wefts. Probably could have tapped slightly better. Still don't have any great attack, so we'll probably just put Giganta in hand. Could see Chatterfang take out Predatory Sliver. As our opponent's Makes two scrolls thanks to the Squirrel General. Predatory down. Just a line for now. So I can play Gigantha. And then do we still have enough mana to activate Sliverhive? We do if we play this untapped. So I do not want to tap Sliverhive. We have good defense, our offense is kind of lacking at the moment, so hopefully a Bone Scythe or Cleaving Sliver can change that. Opponent passes. They can still use Shatterfang at instant speed. Alright, there's a Bone Scythe. And a land, so if I play Bone Scythe, it's just gonna die to Shatterfang. Could kind of hold a bunch of powerful slivers to deploy at the same time. For now, Gigantha can attack. Which seems fine. And we can keep making tokens with the Sliver Hive. It's gonna be Soul Shatter taking out Gigantha. Yeah, I guess we'll play the Bone Scythe now, since they tapped their black mana. Make a token. Another land, sadly. So, it doesn't seem like we have a good attack once Bone Scythe dies. So we'll just pass it back. I'm gonna be patient. Wish we had a second Sliver Hive to make two tokens per turn. And there's a Verdant Command making... four Squirrels here, thanks to Chatterfang doubling the amounts. So plenty of Squirrels to take out Bone Scythe. And yeah, things are kind of starting to get out of hand. If we don't find some action soon, could easily go off if we find our Realm Walker as well. Tosky is not a threat, considering we have a bunch of first strike creatures on defense. Although Forest Walk means Chatterfang does get to attack, and we can block it. Both Stomping Ground and Temple Garden Forests. But our opponent is tapped out of black mana, so if we can find an impactful sliver, we get to have some fun here, and Cloud Shredder certainly counts. 
So we can play this. And I guess we'll make a sliver. And attack. Now our opponent has to kill Cloud Shredder. And we have a chance of top decking another impactful sliver. Opponent attacks with all. Well, they only have the one black mana, so we have two striking slivers. Should be able to line up some good blocks. So... Something like this. If they kill one, we still kill Sovereign. Opponent's creatures go down to two power. And we can kill them like so. Make sure I'm not missing anything. Let's say they kill Striking, we're still good. If they kill Cloud Shredder, we're fine. If they kill one of these, we're also okay. Yeah, I think this is fine. Alright, that happens. And our opponent looks to be in trouble here. A ravenous Quarrel. Makes a couple more tokens. But yeah, that should be game over. Sweet. So yeah, Squirrel Tribal. Also looks like a scary deck if it gets to go off with its general. So we got to see a lot of the new cards from Jumpstart Historic Horizon so far in the matches we've played, and I'm excited to bring you more historic decks in the coming days featuring those, so make sure to become a patron if you want to have your say and vote on the next deck that gets featured. As far as competitiveness goes, Slivers is definitely a solid deck, although probably not quite as powerful as some of the more established tribal decks like Elves or Goblins. So if you want to go for a more competitive tribal deck, those might give you a better shot. But for now, I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd. Thank you.